<laughs> Party purpose. Dad, bring your family together. Optus Family Plan with four SIMs and 250 gigs of data to share. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Meta Finals here. I am still you and Midnight Read. I am still joined by my partner in crime, Benjamin Tico Lee. But we have ourselves a brand new game for you guys. NBA 2K uh, has been wrapped up and concluded. And now we have our hands, of course, on Rocket League. Now, it's the other sport, but you play <laughs> this one with cars. So... <laughs> but they've um, both got a ball involved, which is close enough for me, Tico. I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, but this one is, uh, instead of players, it's, pa it's passed around by cars. So, it may be a little bit hard to get a grasp on, but the, for those who have been playing it for a while, know how to play it. You got boost, you got all that sort of stuff. I, I sound like I don't play the game, but I'm actually in champ, so I know actually how to play the game. Um, yeah, actually, do you know what you're doing Subtle there. flex, subtle flex. Subtle um, flex on that one, why don't you, buddy? <laughs> uh, of course, before we dive into our first game of what is will be a fantastic, hopefully, best of seven series. And even before, unfortunately, I can introduce teams, I do, of course, want to say thank you to our sponsors for helping ensure that we are able to run a full day's worth of events for you, which is, of course, as you can see behind us, Acer, Intel, Optus, Torrance University, as well as Harvey Norman. So, of course, thanks to them for helping us run today's event. And, of course, with Tico, I believe it's time that we should introduce the two teams that are about to be butting heads for our entertainment. All right. So, on the blue side, we have Emmaus Catholic College. They like to call themselves the Emaus team, but uh, Emmaus is pretty good. And on the red side, weighing in at, I don't know how much these cars weigh, but uh, hopefully none of <laughs> A them. A lot. Are. None of them are playing with the Merc or the Roadhog because those are heavy cars and they really bring up the weight of the team. Is Canley Vale High School? And very interesting to see how these two teams are going to butt heads because in a best of seven series, it's not just about be having the most flashy mechanics. Mental fortitude is actually something that doesn't get discussed as much as I think at least it should be coming into games like this. But if you start getting, for example, if you lose the first two games, 0 and 7, you've still got to be able to fight back and keep on playing. So mm. these teams are going to have to keep a level head even when things perhaps aren't going the way that they hope. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, best of seven, people will utilize the first game as a feel game just to get a grasp as to how the other team plays. But heading into the first game already, let's see them kick it off. Yeah, no reason to wait, no reason to hesitate, Tico. We are diving headfirst into these problems as we're going to see the likes of Kelly Vale trying to get a bit of a first offensive round. And we see Ribbit coming in for first, but not really able to get too much. No, it's, it's just a bit of back and forth. As I was saying before, feeler games, especially in these best of sevens, you want to utilize that first game to get a good grasp as to how the game plays out. Good counterattack though. Counterattack, not able to get that. Could have been a very nice goal there coming out. We're seeing Kudo going up into the air. Not much of a setup, unfortunately. He didn't get the angle he was hoping for. But again, as you're talking about, the first game is just used to feel out, see what's going on here, see what opponents are particularly strong, what opponents maybe you can work around. And right now we do see emails. They were making a play forwards, but Nothing too much is happening so far this game. Yeah, no, it is definitely a slower paced game to start off with. I wouldn't be surprised if it does start to pick up. But defensive rotations are coming out clean, coming out from Canley Vale High School. They have their rotations. They know where to put themselves to make sure that they always have that man in the defense. It's, it's really good to see that these players at this level are having that one man on the back post just to make sure that they are always always having that last man on the defense mm. and it's a clear sign that these players are all close uh there's a clear sign that these players are quite coordinated despite we saw two teammates just headbutting before um but it's also an idea that these guys know what they're doing a nice shot there and a follow through from kudo breaks the stalemate yeah and we were talking about how canley vale high school have a large weight if they take the merc or the roadhog uh ribbit has a huge 
huge car. I think it's the uh, the Merc 2.0, uh, the, the Roadhog 2.0. It's huge. It's heavy. These guys are coming in at, at I don't know how many pounds, but they're heavy. Um, and they yeah. are bringing the game over in their favor. Yeah. Kudo taking the second one. And that is such a hard shot to defend. The top corner is just such a pain to do. You see, he didn't get the angle there from Hayden's car. So a nice lead up now for Canley Vale. They got themselves a two goal lead in the first game and they need to continue building up this lead, but it's a very good start in this best of seven series. Yeah, well, I mean, these guys, they need to they need to warm up because it's definitely a live game. These, these guys are playing as we speak. <laughs> um, and look, 11.40, it's early for gamers. So they might not be at their best because we know in a game of Rocket League, everyone goes on their win streak at midnight. It, it tends I'm, to happen. Oh, I'm right here, man. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't even play Rocket League ranked. No, I don't, but I have fun with, I have fun with my Merc. Uh, I mean, with... yeah, Heat Seeker demos doesn't count, but and that close doesn't enough. There's matter. Mock attempts his shot there. We're seeing a follow through from MS Catholic College. They're not able to get the real connections. Mock goes up for a bit of a wide shot. And hi, there's no more real follow-up, however. A bit of lazy clear, though, coming in from Ooh. Ribbit. Could have ended in disaster. Thankfully, the rest of the team doesn't allow the punishment to come through. And now, can they bail? Can they get possession? They may be able to when you get a demo like that. Yeah, Kudo, he goes a bit, he, he flails a little bit in the air. These guys don't have as much car control as you might see in some higher level gameplay, but still, they are playing off the walls. They know what they're doing in terms of I'm not gonna say basic car control, but more intermediate advanced car control. They know what they're doing. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do finally oh, start to see. Oh no, ran right into Hayden there with the Roadhog. Rivet, he's playing quite aggressive with such a heavy car. And it is, I, I love seeing cars, that, you know, meta cars, listening to heavier boys come in to be able to play this game. It's Hayden not having access to that boost. Rivet punts it over him. Mock should be able to get a nice clear on this one. But Ribbit gets the demo, and they're actually a man down. This could net something more if the side of Canley Vale want to be a bit more aggressive. Yeah, but the defense is holding really strong on the side of Canley Vale High School. Look, they have no goals scored against them. They're two goals up, so their offense is really strong, but they always mount it from the back, which means these guys on the side of Emmaus Catholic College, they really need to start pressuring from the back the same way Canley Vale is because they need to they need to drag one member out from the from the defense of Canley Vale. Yeah, but they're not really able to find these dragging out, but they might get a demo oh. through and Super Sonic finds that opening. And demo, I think it was really well utilized here. Because look at him, he was meant to be the man on the rotation, and he just couldn't get there when you're dead. Mm. And you and we were talking about how the heavier cars might be a little bit better. One thing to note, the Roadhog XL is an octane hitbox. Like, the reason why they're not meta is because you have cars that fit the hitbox a lot better and they just look a little bit more fitting. I don't, I don't, I think it's just me, but you, you, you pick these cars because they look good. Mm. That's, um, that's really it. Yeah, that's why I picked the Merc, man. It's a, it's a quality car that has a nice shot oh. going through a beautiful snipe from Hayden. And with less, it was 12 seconds left on the hook, that could be the shot that grabs us to overtime. That is actually a really, really unfortunate time for Canley Vale. They were ahead for four minutes of the game. They remained, Emmaus Rose remained scoreless until 30 seconds left on the clock. And then they score two miracle goals and Mock might bring it to a third. Uh, blows, but no cigar there as the demo comes out. This will net us to overtime, Tico, unless we get some sort of miracle shot through. Not gonna work out. Overtime kicking off for the first of our best of seven series coming out here between Emnus and Canley Vale. We've had some long overtimes in the past, Eco. Um, yep. I'm going to call a near 10 minute one. Do you think it's going to go that long? Uh, no, I don't. I mean, <laughs> we saw a couple goals coming out from Emmaus. I wouldn't be surprised if they utilize that momentum, especially with oh. misplays. Nearly oh. on that one. That, uh, 
That gets you heart racing when you're in the game. You're like, oh, okay, that was close. But Rivet has a counter attack, punts it, oh jumps it over, God. and gets the shot in from just under the crossbar. Look at that flick. He takes the ball, controls it. Look at the touch. It doesn't bounce. He gets the side flip. Mock isn't able to get anywhere. I mean, he's pretty close, but he's not going to be able to stop that. Cantley Vale, I would say rightfully, take the first game of the series. Yeah, very good there to grab themselves the first of this best of seven. Now, there are still many games to go. Yes, good. It is good job from Cantley to get themselves a lead. But now they need to keep it because it's all good getting one victory. But you now need to get the next... Well, there will be three more wins in order to congratulate yourselves properly. So they'll need to continue this forward momentum because, yes, you've won game one, but game number two is a whole nother beast. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a round of who gets to four games first, which is, you know, best of seven, self-explanatory. But, I mean, yeah, they with Canley Vale have the momentum, they might be able to utilize that one, push that into the second game. Emmaus, however, they had two quick goals before they hit overtime. I, I would have loved to see them utilize that momentum and push it into the overtime to be able to score that third goal. But this little break does give them an opportunity to start up again and reset themselves because as you said, mentality is a huge part or plays a huge part in the game of Rocket League, especially when it comes to a best of seven. So Emmaus need to take this time, sort of gather what they need to do to be able to outplay Canley Vale, Canley vale High School because of that solid defensive line that these guys are playing. They need to strategically decide on what they're gonna have to do to outplay or maneuver around it. Mm. And we will get to see the adaptation. My worry is though, Tico, is that's a lot of things you have to start planning for and adapting through after only a single game. Mm. Is this maybe something that they could look at maybe in two games time? Or is this something that you think that needs to be changed right now that will maybe avoid a disaster coming in from MS dropping to 2-0? Well, one thing to note is that you cannot give the second game away easily. Can they build, if they take this second game, it, cause, it, it means that they have momentum, they can push it into the third game, they have more chance of being able to take this the third game away if they win the second game, as well as the fact that, look, if you want to change something, change it quickly, because you still have a couple games to play. If it doesn't work, at least you tried and you have a couple more games to change it up even more. Yeah, well, we'll see coming into the second game what major adaptations, if any, will come through for both of these teams here. We are seeing Canley Vale a bit oh. more on the defensive, but Ribbit is a cruel man. Look at this dribble. Takes one touch off Kudo as well. Gets an unfortunate flick for the side of Emmaus and puts him to the bottom right corner. Ribbit taking it for the team, bringing them to a one goal advantage 30 seconds in. And Ribbit did brilliantly prevail in the last round here, and we are seeing the sheer ball control that this man has is ridiculous. So we'll need to keep our eyes on him for this continual play here as a bit of limbo state coming out now from both teams inside of MS Catholic College's side. Mock should be able to get a pretty nice clear here, but he's almost given it over to Ribbit, who we know is damn good. Gets it past one, gets it past two. Kirby does the setup, not able to get it though. A clear from Hayden does stop the offense. Awkward spot to be able to try and get a uh, try and get a redirect going, but it is fine. You have to look at how Canley Vale is set up. All three members push back. They're not pressing when the defense and the defense on the side of Emmaus has the ball. They're making sure that all three members are pushed back, making sure that there is no chance of a counterattack, which yes, it does stop a counterattack, but it does mean they're alleviating some pressure and giving Emmaus some time to push it past the halfway point. Yes, such good boss, got a nice pass, unfortunately hits the crossbar on that one, but Mock at least gets a, gets a demo onto Ribbit for his troubles there. A nice offensive attempt, Kirby a bit wide, and a nice clear from Mock keeps the game score where it is. Mock now can he get the SCF pass Ribbit, it's a challenge, and unfortunately not what he's able to do. Tries to get a wave dash going on, a wave dash pass, but he's not going to be able to do much with that one. Three seconds remaining on the clock. One goal, definitely not the uh, the pillow buffer that is needed. <laughs> Look, that's a play. 
They had to avoid rule one is what they were doing there as Ribbit gets a mid-air. My god, that was a beautiful shot. Uh, Ribbit taking what he can to be able to take this game in his favor and look This man This power Is amazing Ribbit yep. like he takes these opportunities He knows what he's doing with his car and even though he might not be playing a meta car as we said before Roadhog XL beautiful looking car definitely doesn't suit the hitbox Oh Kudo. my god Kudo How do you find an opening like that? What happened, dude? Just... Yeah, he comes off the wall, utilizes as much boost as possible, keeps himself in the air with a, well, half pre-flip, and then just sort of gets the angle off the back of that and taking that one away. I think during, at some point, he took away the question mark from his username because I remember seeing a question mark there, but that doesn't matter. Um, they are pressing really high. Canley Vale want to make sure that there's not too much space and time on the ball for Emmaus and... The Roadhog utilized for its uh, huge it's presence. Uh, yeah, but I don't think it's just demos coming out there. Uh, a bit unfortunate. I love a good demo with a big car. Not uh, the full goal here. As we're seeing a nice clear coming Oof. up from Canley Vale. They should be able to get this on about too many problems there. Uh, courtesy of Kudo knocking a bit wide. Supersonic decides, hey, can I make something work with this? A bit high. He can do a double tap, but instead hands over to Mock who does a beautiful dance of the ball. Unfortunately, Ribbit saw it coming. Yeah, I mean, it was a good fake. Uh, we saw it coming. He was not going it for it. We knew he jumped late and he was passing to his teammate, but so did Canley Vale. They read that beautifully. Defense is scrambling, but they Ooh. are ready for it. Yeah, they're able to hold on for now. It is, ironically, Canley Vale, they, maybe not, they don't look too comfortable on the defense as we do get to see Mark slip one through, but in a minute and a half, and Emmaus Catholic College, they've got less than two minutes to get the next two goals. I mean, otherwise, an... game two is going to be a wrap. Yeah, I mean, that was an awkward touch to be able to try and save. It bounced very, I mean, it was a slow ball and it bounced off the ceiling. It is a hard ball to predict when it comes to that. But another demo coming out from Ribbit. Roadhog mm -hmm. XL utilizing what it needs to. <laughs> Whoa, you can tell he's looking for a demo there in the air on Hayden. Thankfully, Hayden's discipline not to jump, ironically, saved his life there. But now, Ribbit trying to make an offensive run through. Kirby does fall courtesy of Supersonic. And Supersonic maybe with a little bit of a feint coming in through. Mm -hmm. But he has the boost. He should be able to get into the air. Not able to get the priority angle. And now, with a minute left on the clock, two goals is still the priority here for MS Catholic College. Mark Lift trying to take that one. He does get it, but it's not going to get any angles on that one, unfortunately. And two members. This is a 2v1. Mock utilizing everything he can. He does so really well. Allows some time for his teammates to get back. And they, they put it onto the counter attack. Yeah. Supersonic. One more hit might do it. But Kudo gets the clear. Mock, I really liked what he was doing. He was setting up either for a follow through counter attack or to be able to, as we saw there, jump back on the defense, trying mm. to be cute with the ball, but Kudo finds it. Ribbit on the follow through, not able to make the connection, sadly. But with 15 seconds left on the clock, Kiko, game two is looking to be Canley Vales. Yeah, definitely so. They're utilizing their momentum from that overtime and they're putting it into another goal. There we go. The nail in the coffin there as Kudo sets it up nicely. Kirby gets into the air. Hayden just doesn't look like he has the boost to be able to match it, so it's a little bit heartbreaking. Mm. And is there, and Definitely heartbreaking for them as they do push it in to that next game, 4v1. They push it forward and uh, it'll eventually hit the ground. Yeah. There we go. Bunch of demos had to come through first, you know. We gotta get the bloodthirstiness come out there as our second game of this best of seven going Canley's Vale away and very di different to game number one. You said the players been warming up a little bit, Tico. Well, it looks to be that way, specifically Ribbit with his uh, chunkier car is doing quite a lot, doing a nice quantity of work. Look, it is technically say. not chunkier. Technically, it looks <laughs> chunkier, but I'm saying technically because the hitbox is the Octane, which is the exact same hitbox as every single other car in this game so far. But yes, its presence 
has an impact on everyone else because it looks chunkier. It looks just, chunkier. Just and... put it out there. <laughs> It's your public service announcement, everybody. <laughs> As your public servant's announcement, everyone, there are Octane hitboxes all around the map today. Thank you for tuning in. But we, go. we now, still got a couple more games going, so oh, yeah, stick, stick, stick around, stick around. You know, don't, don't abandon this just yet, as we have our third game coming up right now. Now, Tico, third game, what does MS Catholic College need to do? They're now down 2-0. Their mental fortitude needs to be strong. They can't start going, oh, God, we've got no chance. Here. You've got to keep fighting back. You made your way to the finals. You can't just roll over. What do they have to start doing to maybe be able to get a couple more goals under their belt? Well, look, they need to get momentum started. So one thing to do is get those quick counterattacks. Like, we were talking about how Canley Vale in that first game, they, had all, they always had that three men in the back ready for the counterattack. Looking at that second game, however, they were ready to... They, they always had that one man pushed up. They made sure that they had pressure on the defense. What Amaze needs to do to counter that is what happens in almost every single Rocket League game I see. If you have that one man pushed up, get a quick counter attack with three members. Even two if you need to, and keep that one man back just for a 2-1 split. But you need to make sure that you even it up. You can't You can't have two members attacking a three-man defense, and you can't have... Well, you can't have one member attacking a two-man defense. You need to make sure that you have two members pushing up for the counterattack, even it. So Emmaus need to make sure that they always have that man, that man pushed up. Yeah, but there can be some punishments for having that sort of man pushed up, of course, which means you may not be able to get back on defense. So hopefully... Uh, we'll see if they can pull that off. So the third game should be kicking off soonly here. Cali Vale, they just need to keep this aggressiveness coming out of them because so far they've gotten themselves a nice step forward. And we do get to see on screen, guys, Ribbit from Cali Vale currently is sitting at our MVP position. He's almost a driving force behind Cali Vale. Mm, yeah, so far he is the MVP for the game. Might be subject to, to change. We don't know yet. But... Um, yeah, he has performed really well so far. He's got demo plays. He's got quick rotations. Always there for the defense, even though we might not see it. Even though he might not be the stylish player in the defense. He's always there in the rotations on that far post. Just to make sure that that ball doesn't get through. And even though they might have lost uh, three goals so far. You can say that a lot of the goals coming out in the first game. And maybe two of the goals from the second game. Were off the back of Ribbit. Hmm. He's playing really, really well. But he needs to continue that charge here coming out. Because if you decide to take a step back in a best of series, if you decide, now nah, we can just chill out for this game, I don't need to actively think, you're going to run into a huge heap of issues. We've seen it before in the task Tico. You and I have seen so many games where players, they take a step back because they're winning and suddenly everything falls apart. So they need to keep the aggression going and we'll see that as Ribbit throwing himself forward for this aggression we were just talking about. Oh yeah, definitely so. It is the man who wants to make sure that there is always at least one player less on the Emmaus team. And good bombs coming out, trying to get the defensive rotations out a little bit slower from the side of Canley Vale. But they do, however, manage to get back in time. Two members push up. He needs to take some time, put him to the corner as he does so. Seeing Ribbit, this MVP, gets it past one. Get more boost. Can he do anything else? He needs backup. He does have it, but not getting the angle that perhaps he was hoping for will force him to back away, at least for temporarily. See a really nice move there from Supersonic to slip it past. Mm, definitely so, and tries to get it. Good reflex coming out from Mark. Do you see where that one's coming? No one in the defense, Ooh, though. No, Ribbit. Ribbit's Ribbit huge. Ribbit is massively chunky, able to get that interception there with... I know it's only knocked in here, Box, but damn, is it a chunky car there. And now the counter-attack. Can he get it past? No, Kudo can't get it past Mock there. Probably mocking him for it. Uh, here, Kirby trying to set up for Ribbit on the back end. Mock going to have to fight Ribbit for that one. Will be able to secure up the side of College. <laughs> Can they get it past Mock's in position for the shot? Not able to get the angle. The double touch not dang working due to Ribbit's interception. Yeah, Supersonic Nuria getting a good touch off the backboard to get some form of clear there. So a uh, good pinch. Ribbit passing plays coming out. I love that Canley Vale are starting to connect 
with their teammates, getting that communication going in. Look at this. Look at that passing play. Pushing it forward. It's all kudos. <laughs> kudos, yeah. Oh, nice defense as well. Ensuring that, as you were saying, there's always one man in position to ensure that nothing goes wrong. As Hayden trying to do something, didn't get the ideal angle, and a nice push up. Supersonic at least gets the block. So, once again, these teams are abundantly aware there always needs to be a man back on the rotation. There always needs to be a man ready for the long shot on D. Yeah. Well, oh, oh, on Mark. too close. Too close for comfort. Canley Bill. I love how Emmaus are pressing them on the defense. Look, three members pushed up the halfway point. Supersonic is ready for that counterattack, but they have got three members pushed up. And I love how they're utilizing that three-man strategy against Canley Bale saying, hey, if you have oh, that 2-1 strategy coming up from Canley Bale, if you have that one man dressed up, we're going to send three men to counter for a three versus two. Can Still, despite all things, Nico, this is our third game, and it's actually yet to be a goal. Come out from other side. Oh, I nearly jinxed it there as Rivet nearly gets that one down. Kudo, all my follow through. Rivet not able to get the priority angle. But Kirby finally finding the shot that his team was looking for. Mm, that is a beautiful touch, Mock. Unfortunately, it does bounce off the side wall. I do believe he was trying to go for that diagonal wall in the corner, but just to get it cleared out. But unfortunately, it does hit off the side wall, bounces right into center. Something you do not want to see as a defender, especially when you don't have that man ready at the back post for that one. And they do take the first goal of this next, of this game three of this best of seven series into their favor. And it seems a bit weird that the first goal comes after such a long delay, given how quickly the other games, high scoring the other games were in comparison. But it's the teams finally having a good read on each other, saying, okay, this. You know, Rivet is really good at this. Supersonic is super annoying when he makes his sort of moves like that. So we're seeing the teams having a better understanding of how each other play and are trying to play around that one. And I think quite successfully so, given the fact that, again, we only have had one goal coming into this third game here. Now, the fact that they are taking a long time is now alarming as we're seeing a very cute move there from Kirby. Yeah, and I was a little bit concerned that the Emmaus team oh. didn't have that man in the defense, but unfortunately, wait, Ribbit. Oh, Ribbit does, oh, Kirby with the follow through, not able to make Ribbit work there. But Kudo pumps it up, not able to get past Mock, however. Defense is a little bit too strong to let something like that happen as Ribbit backing away for now. But it's the defensive game, 30 seconds left on the clock here and Canley Vale, they're only up one goal, but that's all you need to be able to win a game. Yeah, but it might not be a good buffer if you want to maintain it, but 30 seconds left. Has a break there, unfortunately. Oh, no. Wasn't able to get it. Kudo trying to get a pass over to Kirby, though. He does so, but Mock is ready for that one. Yeah, Mock ready for that one, but oh. 10 seconds left on the clock here. They're trying to make this one work, but they can't be too over-eager. If they are over-eager, the chances of a counter-attack are something they seriously have to consider. As our third game's coming to a conclusion, a final shot perhaps coming out. But Kudo and Kirby do push it off to the side, and we are now sitting at a 3-0 game state in favor of Canley Vale. Oh, it's a, it's a little bit daunting when you're looking at it from the side of Emmaus Catholic College. Look, they're 3-0 down in a best of seven. If they want to take this back, a reverse sweep is four games in a row. Yeah. It's doable. Let's not, I don't want to start, you know, be like, oh, this is irrecoverable. The game state's never going to be the same. It is a recoverable situation, mm. but it is a very difficult situation to recover because you have to, again, you're getting in this position is a disaster in of itself. And now you have to recover four games in a row. You mess up once, you're done. Yeah. It's no order. Yeah, it is definitely a tall order. Four games in a row in this best of seven. It's definitely possible. We've said it before. I'm going to say it again. But that does mean Emmaus Catholic College need to change something up. That does mean that they need to press the ball a little bit harder. Because when I look at this game as a whole, the Canley Vale have the pressure in the air. They have a lot of the middle pressure when it comes to that midfield. 
they have it in the air a lot of the time. I don't see many challenges up in the air in the midfield coming out from Emmaus Catholic College, as well as just the fact that they don't have the aerial prowess when it comes to Canley Vale. What I want to see coming out from Emmaus is them pressing the ball in the air and making sure that they challenge and make sure every ball is a 50-50, cause that's how you're gonna check. That's how you're gonna counter Canley Vale. The 50-50s are the way to go. There also could be a little bit on the riskier side there, Tico, cause a 50-50, you still have, if you mess up a 50-50, well, farewell to the ball there. So mm. perhaps, are they maybe erring too far on the side of caution and that's where they're starting to fall apart? Yeah, well, I do think they're being a little bit too careful. I mean, Emmaus, when they do go for an attack, they have all three members up. They have that one, many, the one member ready for the counter attack, which is great. But when it's on the defense, it's, it's, it's just them in goal. They got their rotations cleanly, but they're not ready or they, they don't have that man on the backboard. They don't have the man going up for the challenges. And yeah, you might mess up a 50-50. So what? You've got the challenge. Um, you're three. You're three and zero down. I, look, there's a chance for you to come back. But what have you got to lose if you mess up a 50-50? Maybe a goal. That's fine. You can do it by. You can counter that by winning a 50-50 and getting a goal off the back of that. So, what I want Emmaus Catholic College to do is challenge the ball more. Well, I mean, they should be able to because it's not that they're sort of sitting back and letting the game play itself out. They are playing quite aggressive in aspects of the game. They just need to be perhaps a little bit, they need to take a little bit of time to say, okay, let's sit down, let's come up with a battle plan. And I think that's what they are gonna do, guys. We are gonna have ourselves a little bit of a break before we come in to game number four of our Rocket League series, guys. So please do not go anywhere. Myself and Tika will be back for our fourth game of Canley Vale versus MS Cafe College in just a bit.
Hey guys, and welcome back to the Meta Regional Finals. I am still you and Midnight Reed. I am still joined by Benjamin Tico Lee as we have our fourth game here in the best of seven Rocket League Finals up between Amnes Catholic College and uh, Canley Vale High School. Yeah, I mean, Canley Vale High School taking the game so far 3-0. and uh, There's potential for <laughs> a reverse sweep. Um, but look, Canley Vale High School, they've been, they've been dominant for the first three games and I would not be surprised if they do take the fourth game away, making it a four and O oh sweep. Uh, yeah, it, it's hard. Yeah. You're getting, you, when you get into a three and O oh position like this, your mental fortitude, again, it's something you always have to question. Now, yes, most, especially younger, young guys can be quite resilient. It's like, all right, let's get our head down. Let's get this going. The issue is that I fear not resilience alone isn't going to call them back in this game. But they've had time to sit down and say, okay, what's going wrong with this game? How can we recover it? So they're going to come into this fourth game a little more refreshed and maybe with a new battle plan to try and act. Because right now, I feel like Ribbit is causing them a few problems. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, they need to shut down Ribbit, whether it be Demos because he can't really man Mark in Rocket League. You can bump him out of the way. You can take him out of the game for a couple seconds, which is what demos are for. But Ribbit himself is known to get some demos off so that he can clear some names off the board so they can get some opportunities to score a goal. So they sort of need to fight fire with fire and take Ribbit off the map to be able to maybe potentially take this next game away. Five minutes to decide the fate of Emmaus Catholic College. They're getting it going. Yeah, and we'll see, can they get the first offensive proper run through? It looks like they might be able to. Mark gets a really nice clear. Unfortunately, he can't get the follow through here. Supersonic is trying to fight Ribbit for possession, but not able to win that one in the skirmish and sort of forced to hand it over. Yeah, and uh, one thing to note, Ribbit is on a Merc this time. Uh, Hell Midnight, yeah! Midnight's Midnight, Midnight, favorite Midnight. car, Midnight. the Murder Merc. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a couple more demos off the back of that one. Has his signature roach on top of it. Just to make sure everyone knows that it is Ribbit himself. The roach destroyer or the executioner or the... You know what I mean. The bug spray man as Super Sonic able to get a really nice shot off here to break the uh, goal liners. Oh, that's how Yeah, it's unfortunate. Be. He just couldn't... I feel like he had to do something. If you didn't leave it, it's going in. Mm. So he did the best he could, but unfortunately, best in a bad situation. Yeah, and this is the first time Emmaus Catholic College take the lead. So, off the demo, they might be able to get some pressure off the back of that, but Supersonic does uh, spawn in time to get those rotations back. However, a good oh. clear coming out. Supersonic getting a good one off the back of that. Mark, Demos all around the board. They're just trying to make sure that some of the players rib it, actually. Let's see if he can do something with oh, the mark. He does. That was beautiful from Rib here. It says, all right, I'll grab this up. Super Sonic, not able to get attention. And look at that. Just, that mark, you just can't stop that. No, you definitely can't. And, and at this level, you don't see many players playing with different cars other than the Octane uh, and, and, you know, the Dominus. It's, it's a different game when it comes to the Merc. No one knows where that ball is going to bounce or how it's going to bounce. And Ribbit seems to know how to play with a Merc. And it definitely goes to show that he is playing at a different sort of level. Mm. It's comfy. It's this idea of, again, you're so used to hitbooks of the other cars that you when you run something that maybe you're a bit uncomfortable dealing with, you're like, oh God, like I'm not going to change the way I play. But now the ball's gonna bounce differently and I have to try to take that into account. It's just more variables that you have to try and account for. And you have to sort of rely on instinct to drive you forwards here as mock a bit too high. The follow-up is behaved, not gonna connect. Supersonic on the follow-up as well, not able to make the connections work. And now Kudo gets a nice attempt to clear over to Ribbit, trying to dance with the ball in the air, but Hayden will deal with that one quite quickly. Well, maybe Ribbit is just so used to the Octane hitbox because uh, once again, Merc uses the Octane hitbox, but maybe he just knows in his brain what the hitbox is like for the Octane. It doesn't matter what sort of car he plays with. He's just so comfortable on anything 
that he decides he does what he wants. Takes another shot at goal. Ribbit, man of the hour so far. Yeah, taking control in this second, sorry, fourth game so far. Will he be able to do much as Supersonic slides it around him, not able to get past the you know, goalkeeper there of Kirby. And now we're seeing another attempted offense coming out here from Endless Catholic College. But a really nice play from Ribbit slows everything down. Yeah, one for one, two minutes left on the clock, Kirby. He's going to be able to take control. Pops it on the other side, giving an open Ooh. opportunity. Oh. Good save by Ribbit. Oh, a nice demo from Super Sonic. That stops the counter attack. Tries to flick it up into the air. Kirby's in position. Oh. Ribbit, he does get there at the last possible second there. A follow up from Hayden down mid, not going to work. And despite all these, I think, really good attempts coming out from Catholic College, it's just not working out. Yeah, no, I mean, Ribbit is always there. And I, I, I can't stop singing praises of Ribbit right now because this man, look, he's in position where he needs to be. He gets, even though he might not get the, the shots on, even though they might not be on target, he is where he needs to be to apply some pressure. Might not necessarily result in goals, but it does the job. Zero Boo's getting a demo. That's the kind of man that Ribbit is there. As we see Kudo trying to make an offensive run. Ribbit now in the end, not able to get the connection. No one really getting a solid hit there as Supersonic goes for another clear out wide. Hayden not able to get connection there as Kirby hits it long. And with a minute left on the clock, Tico, we are sitting at a dead even one apiece. Yeah, one for one, 50 seconds left on the clock. It's gonna be a hard game for Emmaus because a lot of the pressure is being applied by Canley Bale and they always have that one man in the back ready for that counter attack. Sort of a different game that they're playing to what they usually play. And I don't think Emmaus were ready for it, but they're playing it really well, Emmaus, just to be able to get some form of pressure back. Their challenges are clean. They're getting some more offensive pressure. Their offensive rotations are a lot cleaner as well. That was a butt clencher. Yeah, that was a very cunt there. As Mock going in once again, this constant offense coming up from him, it needs to happen as 10 seconds are left on the clock here. It looks like both teams might just have to resign themselves to an overtime fate here. And if it happens to be, then that is truly do or die for MS Catholic College. As overtime must go in their favor. Assuming, oh, assuming that one didn't work. Yeah, unless they did a This Is Rocket League Justin play coming out, even though they're still ahead by three points, so it might not be that similar situation. Doesn't matter. They've gone into overtime and oh my God. they almost get a goal off the back of that. Yeah, Kirby single-handedly leading the charge there. A beautiful work there from Mock, though. Gets it around. Kudo should be able to get a relatively good clear here. Supersonic on the follow-up. Not going to get that pass, though, as Kirby does a really nice clear, but... Emma's coming up with a lot more aggression. Head oh. on shot from Rivet, though. I don't know how he found that opening, but the man makes it work. Yeah, look at this. He takes the car, pump, bumps it into the bottom left corner. That was a gamble, but it worked. And that was like the most perfect shot because it bounces off the bottom left, comes in, gives them no time to react. And the Mayus Catholic College they go down for the fourth and final game of this best of seven. Mm, and that's a little bit, a little bit harsh coming out there from us, but they weren't able to match the tempo in the first three games. They lost control very early on in that second game. First game, again, you're sensing out, you're reaching out saying, oh, how's this going to feel? Is this good? Is this right? Is this wrong? And they just weren't able to do anything in that situation, which is a little bit heartbreaking to a degree. But at the end of the day, the way that Canley Vale played with this aggression and I almost want to say the superstar of Ribbit mm. leading the charge each and every game to ensure that Canley Vale were able to take the W. Yeah, I do have to agree. It was the it was Ribbit MVP of this game taking charge, making sure that his team, well, he put the team on his back. And I have to say the, the Torrance University play of the game, the big title that we do have to give out it will be that dribble that came out from that, that came out from ribbit during that during that last game i think it was the second goal where he dribbled a pass one made sure that he get it got it past the other and then just slaughtered that one and i'm not sure if i mean he seemed to do that quite a lot with his goals but 
There was one specific one. I think it was the second goal. He just did it beautifully. So have to give him that one for that. Yeah, really good coming out from Reza. Leading the charge for Canley Vale. But uh, we will be bringing in a member of Canley Vale to have a little bit of chat to after as I said, a 4 and 0 oh demolition victory coming in here. But it's not going to be the, uh, what would they think, the MVP, the man of the hour. It will, in fact, be Kudo coming in for us here. So hopefully we'll have a little bit of chat to him and see how he's feeling after being able to take, again, what was a very nice victory over the side of Amherst Catholic College.
Hey guys, and welcome back to the Meta Regional Finals. I'm still Midnight. I am still joined by Tico after a 4 0 victory by Canley Vale over their opponents of Emmett's Catholic College here for the Rocket League event. Now, we have managed to bring in Emma from the side of Canley Vale. Kudo will be joining us for a quick chat coming in here as we took, as we bring him in though, guys. Of course, thank you to the MVP coming in from that series, Ribbit stepping up and making a man out of himself. Yeah, so the stats that you see on your screen is from the last game, the man of the hour got so many saves that you got to call him, uh, I don't know, who's the best goalkeeper in... He's a keeper. He, yeah, he's a keeper for the team. We'll do that. We'll, that's, yeah, that's the joke that we're going to pull out today. Um, yeah, so Ribbit being the man of the hour, taking his team over and over the finals. Um, but we do have kudo question mark in our interview for today. And the question mark isn't a question mark as to we don't know if it's his actual name. No, it's in his name. The question mark is in his name. Kudo, welcome. How are you okay. feeling after that? I'm feeling, oh my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm very relieved right now. I was panicking before the game, couldn't even go a night's rest. <laughs> <sighs> so coming into this game, of course, you guys were up against Endless Catholic College. Now, how many times did you like did you butt heads with them during the regular season? And if so, how did those games go? Uh, so first time we met them was really from a scrim before the actual tournament. Mm -hmm. um, they went pretty smoothly for us, but once we hit them in the actual tournament, oh my goodness, they, they were actually playing pretty well. And they took us out in our, I think it was third week. It was a 3 0 sweep from them. And I was like, oh man, we got to improve our game. And, you know, as you're saying, Ribbit, the MVP, had to go to him. And he improved your gameplay so much. I have to give a shout out to him. Like, to be honest, he's mechanical. Mechanical ability is like way over the top of over us, me and Kirby, and we look up to him as like a role model for the team. And now looking out onto the MR side, I'd say Mock, Hayden, and Supersonic. They are wonderful players, really wonderful players. And it was nice to actually have a, have a nice challenge in this tournament, you know? Yeah, no, I definitely do agree with that. I mean, Emmaus Catholic College, those guys are big. Like, they won a lot of their games leading up to this point. And then, for some reason, Canley Vale, I'm not going to call you guys the underdogs, but you guys performed so well coming into this last game. 4-0. Um, we i don't think anyone expected that sweep to come through but it did what was the what was the biggest challenge for you guys in terms of coming up against the mess i would say coming up against them it would be mock mock was like he's a very aggressive player and the first time that we faced him in the tournament he took control of the game pretty well and while he took control of the game uh he took out all our boosts, boosted out us, and there he made he made his team basically very aggressive. And to that point where we only could stay on the defense for so long. Yeah, you can't you can't play just defense. You can't get any goals if you just do that. Now, of course, that is the you guys are the victors for the New South Wales uh, AC in Queensland area. Um, how confident are you? Because, of course, after this win, you are going to have to deal with the other states of Australia coming after you. Uh, how confident are you coming into perhaps those games uh, later on down the track? I think we're pretty confident in going into the Nationals, except there's probably the war that we're going to face, which might be Max from New Zealand. Mm. I think those guys are a pretty <laughs> big war to face. Yeah, we've had a couple of scrims and they were like, they were, they were very close. They beat us though. Oh my god. Yeah, Mags is, they are a big team to go up against. Uh, but uh, Midnight, I need predictions. Mags versus Emmaus. Uh, Mags versus Canley. Who do you think's gonna. You're gonna make me say this with Canley in the, in the voice call with me, Yeah, yeah. 
Go Honestly, ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, I love you from what we saw today, but Mags is a hell of a different beast that you guys are going to have to... Chat, chat saying it's 4-0 in your favor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what? Just just to save faith, I'm going to say 4-0 Canley. Uh, I don't, just, so I don't, just so Twitch chat's nice to me. Oh, once. goodness. Um, but up against Mags, again, you guys are going to have to... I presume you guys have got some like preparations, some practice, some scrims lined up, because again... You're gonna have to deal with mags one way or the other. You're gonna have to run into them. Like, how like, have you got like preparations for scrimmage ready to go um, for the nationals? Oh, oh yeah, about that. Then uh, we have no preparation right now. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> we're going in winging it. Just play some rank <laughs> freeze and hope for the best. Hell is... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just come up against some GCs yeah. and hopefully you beat every single one of them in preparation for mags. But, uh, look, that was a really good game coming out from you guys. Hopefully you can perform as well going into the next game. Um, we, we just have a, another question for you guys. Oh, no. So, I have a question for you. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Kudo. Yes. So, I asked, I asked Midnight for his, uh, for his, for his, uh, interpretation as to what the next game is going to be against Mags. Do you think you're going to win against Mags? Uh, and you don't need to be humble here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna go. Here's why I think the scores are gonna go. They're gonna get two games off first, but we're gonna mm. go four two at the end. Okay. Right at the end. Someone Rob. clip that. That's what we need right now is a clip <laughs> for when we have oh, national, no. just so we have this ready to go. Mm. This oh, is what yeah. we need. We'll just make sure we put it on stream. Everyone watching during nationals right now, this is what Kudo said. Four and two, they're gonna take this one away. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm hoping that Apple's not watching, or like any of the. <laughs> they probably are. What they'll what they'll likely do is they'll because I think Mags does do its research. They'll probably watch these games, and be like, okay, let's see what. Because you guys are gonna have to. I wouldn't say obvious weaknesses, but you have to make sure that your game is nice and tight coming in for the finals mm. because. Everyone wants to make it to that grand final stage. Okay, <laughs> what are the chances of you? Like, how confident are you? Because I say you're confident going up as mags. What about the whole thing in general? Are you making it, Kudo, to the grand final? Yeah, I, I feel very confident in just making there it. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's what we need. Yeah, just the finals. Like, from last year, we went 3 1 against Kaima, and we were like, damn, can we really make it next year? But, you know, confidence boosts after the really good run we've had in the tournament so far. Definitely so. So we got one more question for you. What is something that you can improve off coming off of the back of that game? Uh, definitely rotations. Our communication, I'd say, is very nice, very strong, except we need more, I guess, rotations. They're very sloppy, especially on my side. I've seen myself uh, in no man's land a lot of the time. And yeah, that, that, that gets, me, gets me pretty down sometimes. I'm just like, where the hell am I? What am I doing? <laughs> oh god. Uh, I, know, I know that feeling all too well. It's just like, oh, where's the ball? Oh. Driving around midfield. <laughs> Somewhere over there. Let me get I'm some boost and I'll come back. Yeah, it's having a yeah. Sunday drive in Rocket League is where I find myself most of the time. So, no, it's deco to no end, but it's great fun. Yeah, but at least you get some demos off the back of that. I mean, uh, yeah, true. That's a great one there. Um, yeah, watching demos from uh, Rupert just oh, like, yeah. from the back. Put your sunnies on, just watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cool guys don't look at explosions, and the way Rupert plays with his uh, his chunky cars, he can certainly make that one work. But but they still have the hitbox of the Octane, just remember that. There we go, they still have the hitbox of the Octane. How many times are we going to hear that today, Tico? Mm, well, that's the last time. But, anyway. I think we're going to end that interview there. Thank you so much, Kudo, for coming in to the interview. And uh, I think everyone in chat loved to hear your voice. But uh... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, clipped and shipped coming in there as well from chat. So don't, don't feel like the, some clips of this interview will be more than happy to be taken when we do hit the national stage um, oh, in the future. <laughs> Uh, before we dive off, guys, guys, of course, I'd like to give a thanks to our sponsors, which you can see, them, of course, behind myself and Tico, Acer Intel, Optus, 
uh, Torrens University, as well as the Harvey Norman. Of course, they thank you, Fakuno, for joining us and your team to move on to the national stage of Meta. Now, guys, facing up next is going to be our third and final game for the H Meta HSE um, finals. Finals, yeah, finals. I was thinking finals. nationals for yeah, some reason. Regional finals. We're not nationals yet. We're regional finals. We're not nationals yet. We're, we're nearly there. Uh, which is, of course, League of Legends. So, guys, there will be, unfortunately, a little bit of a break before we do get into that one. So don't go anywhere. The stream will tell you exactly how long till the next game, so just keep your eye open and don't go anywhere for our third and final game, myself and T, who will bring you League of Legends to wrap up this Saturday. family together. Optus Family Plan with four sims and 250 gigs of data to share. 